Nope. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh... Okay, we had everybody. CAO, you ready to go? All right, so we'll call, call to order the regular council meeting of Tuesday, August 27th. Uh, once again, I apologize. Uh, we're, five, we're running five minutes behind time. We, were, we had a quick meeting with our MLA just before this, uh, which was uh, very, very productive. And so we'll move forward. So can I get, um, are there any changes to the agenda as presented? Ms. Winters. Thank you, Your Worship. Administration has no recommendations to change the agenda this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Councillor Hendricks. Uh, yes, Your Worship, so moved. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? And that carries unanimously. Tonight we have three items on our consent agenda. I'd like to move at this time that council consent to approve the following agenda items. Uh, item 5A, special council meeting minutes of June 25th, 2019. Uh, item 5B, regular council meeting minutes of July 9th, 2019. And item 8A, subdivision approval extension of Boval Phase 7 SEA 16-01. Uh, discussion on the motion. All right, seeing none, call the vote. All in favor? That carries unanimously. All right, which brings us to item four, open forum. And tonight we have one registered presenter, Mr. Shannon Mitchell, sir. Good evening, everyone. I have to first ask you to forgive me if I refer to the town of Beaumont, is because my name is Shannon Mitchell. I live at 4102 59th Street in Beaumont, and I've been a resident here for 29 years. So that's the city town thing that I have a problem with. Uh, what I'd like to address is I had some concerns about the basketball court relocation. The way it was done, the way it was handled, the way information was handled post fact. I'll give you an example. When the residents in Westbrook were notified that the basketball court was going to be moved, we were notified the week before they were going to start construction. So, and we were notified by mail, okay, which is a pretty archaic way of doing it because we go to our mailbox once a, once a week. The lady that brought it to our attention actually went to her mailbox on Wednesday. So she saw it three days before the week before they were gonna start construction, all right? Then what happened was some people made some, some concerns to not council members, but the people in Parks and Rec, and then that was postponed. The construction was postponed. When I went to Parks and Rec, it was portrayed that this information was mailed out. You know, everybody would have a chance. Mailed out three days before something's gonna happen is not notification, okay? Then um, some of my concerns came about is trying to find data regarding this, all right? Regarding the water upgrade reservoirs. The basketball court relocation, you needed a secret handshake and a Dakota ring to find it on any of the websites. It was not on the town of Beaumont website, sorry, city of Beaumont website. It was actually on let's talk Beaumont.ca under water reservoir reconstruction. Click under that, then you get into the basketball court relocation. So again, unless you knew exactly where to go and you hunted for it, that particular topic was not easily found. That's where a vote was placed so that the, town or the city could get some feedback from residents. But again, you're not gonna get any feedback if people don't know it's there. Now, I don't know if this is just a formality so that the city can say, oh, look, we notified the public, we gave them a chance to vote, this was the results, this is why we're gonna go ahead with it, okay? So I went to the open house as well. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was, I would call it fourth rate. And the reason why I would say that is when I went there, all that happened was 
They had plan A, which is in the Westbrook subdivision, plan B, which is where the volleyball courts are, and that was it, all right? On the website, Let's Talk, it had plan A, plan B, or no basketball court. At no time did any representative of the city mention that to people that came to the open house. Basically, what was happening is people would come in and the representatives of the city would go, you can pick plan A or plan B, okay? So again, to me, that seems like the town is manipulating the data or the public to a certain choice and not giving them the choices that the town of Beaumont is saying they are in the website, which was none. On the website where it said none, not once have I seen what the reference cost would be to actually rebuild the basketball court. If it's not required, right, or if somebody might be on the, on the edge wondering if it is required, it would be nice to know what the cost would be. I was told it would be approximately $40,000. But again, that's something that the public, when they're making their opinions, should be represented to know. When at the open house, I was told that one of the reasons why the basketball courts were moving, because structurally, the courts where they're currently are located, the vibrations of the basketball courts are compromising the integrity of the tanks below, okay? So I felt that I would like to see some of the cooperating data for that, uh, and any engineering structural reports or something like that to support that, or is that just a statement that somebody made to be able to say, oh, okay, no, that's why you need to move it. On another one of the websites, the term illegal was used twice. Why are we doing this? Eliminate illegal disturbances of water, reservoir, concrete cover. Eliminate illegal attempts to open a reservoir hatch. Well, I try to inquire about, was the RCMP aware of this? If this is an illegal activity, are they aware of this? All right, I cannot get any data like that. Relocating the basketball court will not change that. Even if you move the basketball court, the, the hatches are still gonna be there. So why is that data being the stuff presented to people to try to sway their opinion on how they should pick the way the, the basketball reloca relocation should be? I asked, are the tanks gonna be bigger? Because if they're not gonna be bigger and they're just gonna reconstruct, there's enough room beside the existing basketball courts to move it where there's no tank. Thank you guys very much for your time. Well, thank you for coming in tonight. We do appreciate the comments. This is coming up for discussion in item 8B. Uh, do any members of council have, do you mind taking a few questions? Yeah, go ahead. Council Barnard. Thank you, and, and thank you, Mr. Mitchell, for coming in. I appreciate your, um, the work you've done on this and the, the preparation. I just was wondering, since you have the opportunity, do you have an opinion as to how this should be dealt with? You, I, know, I understand your, your frustration and concern about the consultation. That, that came across loud and clear. But do you, um, I'm not clear on where you sit in terms of the relocation, where or if or, again, you mentioned some other options about the, the reservoir, but I, I'd like a clarity around your... When I talked to Parks and Rec, they were told, I was told before we went to the open house that there would be options available to us. There was nothing presented as a potential option. I asked for an electronic digital layout map of Beaumont to show where potential options were. I was never given one. So again, we were told options, but it was just basically placating us to that. One of the things that surprised me was that there is a uh, child's park right close by. It is constantly used, which is great. We like to see it, we like to hear it and stuff like that. What I ended up doing was every time I seen parents playing with their kids there, I would go and ask them, no, did you know that there's a proposed basketball court going here? Every single parent was upset with that idea. But every single parent didn't even know that that was gonna happen. And that's what I mean, is that the information distributed to the public was very, very non-existent. But every parent was against that. Now they did do a survey online, a public opinion poll, and they're gonna see spikes once in a while on that because every time I'd get a group of parents, before they even left the park, they were on their phones going to Let's Talk Beaumont to put in their opinion. One of my concerns that I brought up at the open house is I actually went to two different realtors, had them come by casually because I didn't want to incur any costs, 
And I asked them, I said, will a basketball court being built here affect my property value? They said, yes. I said, is it gonna go down? They said, of course. So that's where one of my concerns are. If you have judgments about that, Mayor, I would, I would like know. to challenge that. I would have to, yeah, I'd have to go get an in, in, independent assessment on that one. because I agree 100%, and that's what I asked at the open house. Yeah. Did anybody do a property value assessment of what could potentially happen to the people that are landowners there? Yeah. I talked to somebody in Parks and Rec. I said, when you're looking at an overview of a map where you think something potentially might go, you're seeing rooftops. You're not seeing that that's my house. You're not seeing that that's my second biggest investment behind RRSPs. So if something can negatively affect my property value, mm -hmm. but again, I'd be willing to do that as well, but if I pay for it, I will make sure that I forward those costs back on where I'm not the one eating the cost. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that that would be an eyesore in a bad location where it was first proposed. Now, one of the questions I actually had, and I'm sorry I ran past my time, sorry. is what is the process on how things like that are determined without the public even being notified that, oh, tomorrow it's being built. I would like to just somebody be able to, to tell me the process. And you, I know you can't give me answers today because I've been trying for seven weeks to get one answer for any of those questions I asked. And I, wasn't, I have not got one answer yet. No, fair enough. And I don't have the answer to that tonight for you, I, but we will get back to you. And we'll take a note and admin will follow up. Councillor Van Newkirk. Yeah, thank you for coming in, sir. Um, basic question right back at the beginning. Uh, you referenced uh, it was difficult to find where the information was and where to get the input is, and it was it was uh, over on letstalkbeaumont.ca. Uh, as to question, how did you find that? Did you f end up finding it by clicking, or did you phone in, or did you contact someone who redirected you to that, or how did you end up finding it in the end? I actually found out mm -hmm. when I went to the open house meeting there. One of the problems that my, what I mentioned as well, first of all, mail to me is a little bit archaic and unfortunately you guys have to use the paper as a good source of information. But I think most of the people here can agree. Six of my papers out of seven were so drenched, I just threw them into the recycle bin because I couldn't read them. So again, if that's going to be a way that the town needs to convey very important information, then maybe that they have to add that they're placed in bags so that they're waterproof so that the residents of the town can actually see that information. But yeah, no, I had to get it from the open house. So at the open house, you were directed to that and that's how you found it then. Okay, thank right. you for that. Yep. Now, at, unfortunately at the open house, I, I let the representatives do their, this is plan A, plan B for the basketball court relocation. I let them do it. And then unfortunately I said, no, if you go to Let's Talk Beaumont, there's a third option, which is none. And again, not a single representative there mentioned that as an option to the people coming in. So again, if you want to control people's opinions, you can control the information. Councillor Marcus Wayne, final comment, and then we'll let you go, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate your time tonight. Well, I'll be staying for your vote, though, too, please. Yeah, oh, yeah, so no, no, no questions, just a comment. So you, you mentioned it right off the top and you just hit on it there about swaying people's opinions. So I just want to clarify that. Um, so I can assure you that that's not the way that this is designed. It's not designed to sway opinions. Can we improve our communication? Absolutely, and that's something that we need to look at. Um, so I wanted to clarify that off the top. I also want to acknowledge that uh, one of the things that this council has brought forward and we're in the process of going through now is a, a public participation policy where we're trying to go through and look at, hey, when you've got a project of this type of magnitude, how do we want to engage, how do we want to engage the public on it? We need to do a better job of that, absolutely. And so what we're doing is um, we're going to go out to the public and say, hey, a, a project kind of in this type of magnitude, this is the type of approach, right? Is just dropping a mail off uh, in, in your box on a Monday uh, sufficient? The feedback we're going to get is going to be no, right? So what I can assure you is that no, it wasn't designed to sway any public opinion. Can we improve our communications? Absolutely. And that's something that um, I would encourage you to, to weigh in on once we get that, that policy back. I, I don't know exactly when it's coming back. Um, uh, Mr. Schwartz, but um, ultimately that is something that we need to improve. It's been identified from within council here that we need to make sure that A, residents know when they're going to be engaged and, and what type of questions they're going to be asked. So I really appreciate you, you mentioning um, bringing this up tonight. It just reinforces the message that we need to do a, a better job at uh, letting residents know 
how their information is going to be used and making sure that we're making it available not just through the mail but using social media online different sorts of sources so i don't i don't uh, have any questions for you i just appreciate you coming in just want to clarify that sorry if i can expand on councillor barnhart's question to me there was a parent there that made a very valid suggestion because they did not know and they were very concerned about having teenagers located in that area he said why wasn't there some little sign put up potential relocation of basketball court any concerns, contact this. That way, everybody in that particular area, especially the parents, it's not just the residents there, it's the parents that use that area would have an easy way to be able to see what's being proposed. And if they have the, if it is, let's talk Beaumont.ca subsection eight, then they know that on there so they can have their opinion. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, it, it, it's a communication um, thing that, that we need to work on and it's something our council is committed to doing, so thanks. I, I would have agreed with you, except for it failed on all three phases that I saw. So if all three phases of communication to get that ba the basketball court relocation out to the public, it totally failed on all three levels. Okay, sure. All right, thank, thank you guys very much. <clears throat> All right, which brings us to, there are no public, item six, there are public hearings, there are none tonight. We have no registered presentations, which can, brings us to item 8B, the basketball court relocation main reservoir upgrades. Administration. Uh, Mr. Sewell. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council. Paul Suter, Community Services Director, City of Beaumont. Just bear with me a sec. So the subject tonight is the reservoir surface upgrades and basketball court relocation. Recommendation that council approve the decommissioning of the basketball court and commence the reservoir surface upgrades without constructing a replacement basketball court at this time and that further future options be explored. The background, at the 2008 budget deliberations, the budget committee recommended to proceed with the reservoir surface upgrades and basketball court relocation. The project was recommended for approval only if the basketball court was relocated prior to decommissioning the existing court. Previous council committee directions. At the February 27, 2018 regular council meeting, council adopted the 2018 consolidated budget operating and capital, which included the reservoir surface upgrades and basketball court relocation project. Analysis rationale. In order to ensure that Beaumont's drinking water supply is safe, the surface upgrades on the reservoir are required. The basketball court is located on top of the reservoir concrete slab, and there are cracks in the slab that can cause contamination of the water. There was one public open house and one online survey conducted to discuss the possible sites for relocating the basketball courts. Through this process, it was discovered that the majority of respondents were dissatisfied with the two proposed possible relocation sites. Through the Our Places and Play Recreation Parks and Facilities Master Plan process, it was recommended that a new outdoor multi-sport court with boards that can be used for outdoor ball hockey, basketball and lacrosse is needed within the community within the next five years. The community feedback also questioned the need to relocate the court as the community was well served with options. Response options alternatives, number one, the council approved the decommissioning of the basketball court and commence the reservoir surface upgrades without constructing a replacement, replacement basketball court at this time and that further future options be explored. Number two, the council approved the commencement of the reservoir surface upgrades without further plan to replace the basketball court. Number three, the council maintains the direction to continue to look for a suitable location to construct a new basketball court before undertaking the reservoir surface upgrades. And number four, the council direct administration on how they wish to proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Tudor. Appreciate you coming in tonight. I know this has been a long time coming. Um, just before I open it up to count uh, to questions of members of council, um, just just going back when we originally approved this in 2018, we know, we know that the reservoir uh, repairs needed to be done, but we also know that that is a very well used um, uh, community amenity. I mean, there's a lot, and quite honestly, yeah, we probably don't need another basketball court, but the fact that it sits on top of a fenced in area, the amount of parents that go there and their kids learn how to ride bikes and they learn how to skate and they, the amount of ball hockey that's played. Um, you mentioned right in your uh, agenda item that the multi sport court with boards is needed. Well, that's exactly what that facility is currently, purpose that facility is currently, currently, um, 
serving. And that was one of the reasons council wanted it picked up and, and relocated. Um, and honestly, I'm not married to the two options that came out. There are other locations within the city that, uh, that could be used. Um, so I know going back to, I uh, went to the Baja, the Bowman Hockey, Bowman and Amateur Hockey Association, and they mentioned that they might have some money to put a rink up with some boards. Can we give us a quick update on where we are with those discussions? Yes, Your Worship, members of council. I did meet with Baja last week and they are very interested in, in doing a project with the city, uh, an outdoor rink that could be used uh, all seasons for basketball, ball hockey and ice hockey. So we're in discussions now with what that project looks like and how we're going to move forward with that. Because that might be a solution to, to the conundrum we find ourselves in now. Um, but anyway, I will open it up to members of council. Councilor Mar Councilor Mar Thank you, Worship. Uh, can you, do you mind scrolling down a little bit, Ms. Winter, just so you can see the response options? That's perfect. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm confused by option number two, that council approved the commencement of the reservoir without a further plan to replace the basketball court. So are you assuming with that option that basically just leaves the basketball court there without decommissioning it? No, we would we would remove it to do the repairs. We just wouldn't replace it. So explain the difference between one and two. One is uh, removing it and doing the repairs to the reservoir, and we would look at future options to, to where to relocate it, the basketball court. Number two would just be to not bother to do that exercise after you remove it. Okay. That makes more, I think, strangely worded, but that makes more sense. Or, I mean, we, we have to do the upgrades to the reservoir, that, right? That, that's clear. Um, okay, that, that was my initial, initial question. Um, the, the comment, I guess, um, is around the, you know, you highlighted there are our places in play, that recreational master plan. I think that's the, the place for this discussion. Um, you know, I think one of the things that this council has tried to avoid is making decisions on amenities or anything in isolation without looking at the bigger picture. Um, so I think that is the place to have the conversation personally. Um, so I, I, would, I would support, um, I would support um, decommissioning the, the, the basketball court so we can get on with the, with the uh, reserves, that, uh, the upgrades that we need. Um, but then this is front of mind for me once we get this recreation master plan. I think it's coming up in the third Tuesday of September here. So we're all very eagerly awaiting that. I'm sure uh, you are as well. So um, that would be the, the way that I lean today. Fair enough. Councillor Van Newkirk. Hello, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I just wanted to um, ask a couple of questions and pointed questions, I guess, around what we expected to get back from the feedback and what options we gave residents. So um, quite honestly, one of the expectations that I had, um, founded or not, is that we were gonna ask residents where they thought might a location, a, a location might be. Um, instead, uh, I also went to the open house and I found there were two axes on a map of potentials. And uh, you know, as we heard earlier, there was an option of none as well over to the side. But uh, you know, what, one of the one of the concerns I have is that you know we we went out to engage, but we didn't actually ask residents where they thought a good place for this might be, and that bothers me. Um, you know, we we said here's here's two here's two places it could be. Which do you like? Um, I'm not at all surprised that we're at the outcome we are right now. Uh, for myself, I I support option one. Uh, I think for the safety of our water supply, we need to decommission that, get the repairs done. But we can't we can't let the conversation end there. Um, echoing Councillor Monkoff Swain's thoughts, the you know we we shouldn't make this decision in isolation because we have the upcoming conversation around that. I do like the um, you know the idea of boards and multi-sport and that kind of stuff because it seems like a pretty easy win to to get a, a bunch of things in one spot and I really like that. Um, and then I want to leave one thought with you as well. There was some, um, I live in the colonial area of the community and there were a few residents in that area that um, expressed that, that that piece, save for the uh, amenities at the colonial uh, school, was not very well serviced with those types of things. And there was a few residents who said, you know, why can't we put it at uh, the, be the corner of Colonial Way and Riker Drive kind of directly east of the Royal Bank. We have a big green space there. There's a current field. You could tuck it away on a, the other side of the path. There's a purple park there. It might actually close out the amenities there. So, you know, if and when we start looking again, um, I would implore, you know, an option or feasibility of, uh, of that location to be, to be considered. So thank you. Councilor Danlock. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, sir. Uh, Olani, the uh, 
the rationale here. Uh, two questions, if you don't mind. On the analysis and rationale section of the presentation on the screen, now the last sentence, the community feedback also questioned the need to relocate the court as the community was well served with options. Can you clarify what that means? My interpretation of that comment is those who provided feedback through the survey open house say there's no need for a basketball court. Else. There's already other places they can, they can go play basketball. Is that a proper interpretation of that last sentence? That's correct. That's, that's what correct. I interpreted. When I looked at the feedback results, that's what I interpreted. Yes. Okay. My next question is, I believe we had allocated money in our capital budget last year for this reservoir project to happen. It didn't happen last year, so it's now been pushed to this, this, this year capital budget to this, do the same project. My question is, no one in council questions the need to have safe water. I'm not questioning that whatsoever. The question I do have, though, is what I've seen myself, I've gotten from people, uh, is that the current facility, the basketball court and so on, is very well used by local youth to play basketball and not get in trouble, which is a good thing. So taking that away has an impact, as we can all can appreciate that. So we have to balance that takeaway with the need of safe water. I get that. question I have is, we talked about re reservoir replacement last year. Nothing happened and our water was still safe. Now we're into late August of this year, 2019. We don't fix the reservoir yet. So the question is, how safe is our water? Is the reservoir at a point where it's critical that we have to do something regardless of the implication of, of losing the basketball court? Or is the water still safe and we're fine, but we have to address this issue? If the water is fine, I'm leaning towards option three because I don't want to say to lose the basketball court until we absolutely have to lose it because only those kids have a place to go to. And it became clear from, from the survey and people in the open house that the two options presented weren't very popular with our, with our population. So I guess the point is, I see the need for the reservoir repair, but if it's not at, in the judgment administration or environment Alberta that our water is at jeopardy, we've already didn't do it last year. This year's almost almost half over for construction. How critical is the water issue? Because we all want safe water. The question is, where are we at with that? Sorry, long-winded question. Going to the CAO for this? <laughs> yeah, only because uh, Mr. Souter wasn't here last year when we uh, started this I realize project. that. Sorry. Okay. Last year, uh, when we ran out of the season because of because of our mistakes, and and we owned them on this project, we consulted with our engineers and said, "Look, you know, can this thing make it another year?" Uh, and the answer was yes. Uh, so that year is up. Uh, we look at it. There's some visible cracks. You can see the water from the surface. Uh, we don't want to wait another year. We would prefer to get it done this year. So we're, we're making that assessment. The, uh, the, to put the water in any type of jeopardy uh, is not something that compares to anything else in, in our community. That I said, if we wanted to get it studied and looked at again, I think we're going to get the same answer. You know, it's time to do these repairs. Okay. I, I appreciate that, that feedback. Thank you. Councilor Barnard. Thank you, Your Worship, and um, uh, thank you, Mr. Sutter, for the, the information. But I, I'm, I'm feeling quite uh, as if, yeah, we've, we haven't got the right information we need to make the decision as to where to put the courts. We're pretty clear, I'm very clear, that it's critical we have to do this now before winter comes. We have to get this work done. Um, I'm quite disappointed in the results of the survey. I don't think it gives us anything to really make a decision on as to where. So can you tell me, give me some surety that we'll have another consultation that's going to give us those answers? Or what is the plan going forward here? I, I am leaning, as others are, it I, seems like uh, towards option number one. But what, what are we going to do to make up for the fact that we really haven't got, and unless you can give me different information, what I have here does not give me comfort. So, Thank you, Councillor Barnard. Um, Obviously, I wasn't involved in the process a year ago or, or even very recently. I just arrived, so I can't speak to what was done well or not well. It, it, it appears to me we, we need to make a change there on how we engage with the community as far as what we're doing with the project. Mm -hmm. And going forward, if we're looking at a new location, I'm confident we will do that a much better job, perhaps, than we have done in the past. Um, we are discussing internally about potential other sites. Obviously, I've had a conversation with Baja about a similar facility that they would like to construct. Uh, we're looking at some refurbishing of an existing facility. There's other options out there. We do have currently 29 other hoops available in the community. So it's not a shortage of hoops necessarily. It might be a shortage of that type of facility, which is a little different conversation. But if you want to shoot hoops, there's definitely other options there. There's only down the high school a block over. You can go and do that. So we do have options, but 
uh, I'm going to take some time here to look at this and where is it maybe a better couple options before we go back to the community to engage them again and see if we can't get a, do a better job to get some more options, either from them or through the process, give some more options available to them and, and maybe we'll find some other stuff that comes out through that process. But right now, I, I would just ask that Council let us move forward on this project to get the water reservoir surface uh, upgraded and we will look at options for the future for another location for that facility. Just building on that, if we went with option one, what would be the timeline? Because honestly, we're, we're, we started this process two years ago and we're, we're right back at square one. And so what would, it, what would a timeline be to, to actually figure this out and get it done? Well, um, I would suggest we could bring something forward for a 2020 budget. Well, it's already in the budget. No, for to replace the, the facility. Okay. Isn't this part of uh, the whole thing we're talking about, the water recreation project? Like, that's the best place for conversation. Yeah, well, this, this, this was, yeah, that's the boat places and stuff. But we have a $50,000 budget item that got approved in 2018 to move this court. It was supposed to move in, it was supposed to move in 2018. I agree. Like, so... Like, I just think we're going to get a whole bunch of information in three weeks. Yeah. Like, budget's not the issue here. Ms. Mohammed, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I actually would suggest, as, as the next step, given the, the results of what's going on, um, that we do wait for the master plan to come, um, look at what's recommended in the master plan, and prioritize. There's going to be probably quite a list of things that uh, we'd want to move forward with and decide how this fits in that process. I would also suggest going this time around um, um, exactly what Councillor Van Newkirk had suggested, so maybe some crowdsourcing to determine you know, what areas of the community are actually looking for this basketball court. Um, I suspect uh, that options were brought forward and taken out to the community as from the municipal perspective and the timelines that they thought those would be viable sites where a municipal reserve were and all those other um, items that they need to check off the list. That's why they brought forth those locations. Um, but given the feedback on those locations and the need for a basketball court in general, uh, it might make sense to weigh it out with the master plan and then decide how you want to proceed. Uh, there might be other recreational items that you want to engage on at the same time as well, that maybe there could be joint facilities. Well, yeah, the point is it's not really just a basketball court. It's, it's a fenced-in court, which gets used for a lot of things other than just basketball. So I'm not talking about just basketball. I'm talking about multi-sport uses. Okay. Councillor Hendricks. I wish to thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to work through the timing. Uh, we're going to resurface this reservoir. We're resurfacing it. We're not taking, it's a structural slab that covers it. We're not taking it apart. We're going to resurface the top just to ensure it's waterproofed. So I'm just taking myself back to when we did the, uh, the uh, tennis courts. When we resurfaced those, we shut them down. We told people they couldn't play tennis until, because we, we didn't have other tennis courts to, to, to put them into, and then we resurfaced them and opened them up again. How long is this going to take uh, to resurface the reservoir? I'm not sure. This, the, so this can't be a large, long, drawn-out, one-year event, uh, given the money involved. Um, so we're going we're gonna to seal it. We're going to tell people, well, it's closed until it's opened. I mean, we've just done that with a pool, <laughs> so we should be able to do it with this basketball court and then reopen when we're ready to go. Well, they're not going to reopen the basketball court in the existing location. No, but I'm just wondering why not. Oh, quick question. Ms. Mohammed? No. Yeah. Go ahead. Confusing him. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Okay, the reason why that we're not reopening the basketball court is because um, the inspections that were done, and it's not just surface inspections, we actually get a diver that goes underground into this reservoir and takes a look at what needs to be repaired. Um, under, and under the recommendation of the experts who have reviewed this and told us what repairs we need to make, uh, is also the recommendation that a basketball court not be on top of the reservoir, that it is not good practice to have it there. Um, and from what I understand, and I don't have the details tonight, there are security concerns as well with having the basketball court there and the kind of behavior that's been going on around there, not the families. Um, so uh, that is part 
of parcel. I think they want to have it actually secured as a water source of this community should be. Okay, so not to give you some history, but I was there for the sod journey when we built that thing. <laughs> and part of it was to create this amenity space. And uh, certainly uh, for those who lived across the street and others, uh, um, a lot of discussion about it going there and uh, Beaumont Amateur and others were all part of the conversations because it just added yet another uh, amenity to the community. But uh, at that time it was designed for it, but uh, I'm hearing that it's degraded to the point where they shouldn't be on it. And we're gonna now create uh, uh, some kind of a surface over top of it. It was actually designed to be buried at one point. So the, the, the loading on it was a whole lot more extreme than you know putting some people in basketball outfits and you know playing roller hockey. So. Uh, so it was deemed at that time to be a whole lot less live and dead load as compared to, you know, just a, a dirt style gravel, you know, which is what we have on the other half of it. Um, so, okay, I got the background. Well, then we better go find another spot if, if that's the issues and we have some, somebody telling us that we can't go back on it, then uh, we better go find a spot and find it soon. So, Councilor Danlock. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, one further point that I just want to get my head around is the estimated time of construction to do this work. So you've now, it's now clear to me that we have to move the basketball court and it cannot be replaced on the, on, on the site. That's fine. Okay. So the question I have now is with a, with a master plan coming out in three weeks from us, if we need two months for construction on the reservoir work to be completed, if we waited until September 15th, is that enough time to do the work before the snow comes and the work can be done properly, then that gives us the entire winter to figure out a new basketball court location, taking into account the rec plan coming out in three weeks from now. Or if we need six months, how soon do we have to get, how soon do we have to be, begin construction? Because by the sounds of it, the basketball court cannot stay in its current location, as you mentioned a moment ago. It's got to go somewhere. Question is where the two options presented aren't favorable to the community in general. So we need till next spring to get ourselves a new location. The multi-use facility outlined here has a lot of merit to it. My only point is how, how long can we delay the basketball court being closed to keep the kids there enjoying it while we can before we have to put it somewhere else. Is it two month construction time? Is it three perhaps? Thank you, uh, Your Worship, and through to Councillor Danilak. Um, the preference is to get the repairs going as soon as possible. So the contractors are lined up to get going. Um, I wouldn't recommend delaying it because we never mm -hmm. know in Alberta when the snow is gonna fall. Yes. So um, the sooner we get on this one, the better. Okay, that's what I expected the answer to be, but I wanted to hear it, thank you. Councilor Stoke. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm not sure who I'm directing this question to, so I just want to <laughs> confirm that everything I've heard is correct. So. We have, to close the, we have to close the basketball court in order to repair the reservoir, and we've just heard the, the recommendation that that needs to take place as soon as we possibly can. Um, the two sites that were proposed as alternatives are felt to be unsuitable. So that leaves us with options, that really leaves us with only option one. Um, is there any benefit to delaying so I suppose this will be option three at this time. Is there any benefit to delaying this decision until we have seen the um, Parks and Facilities Master Plan so that we could perhaps uh, find an alternative, perhaps find a site for the replacement basketball court from the, does that help us to do, does the master plan help us to do that, find an alternative site for the, for the basketball court? Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship, and through to Councillor Stout. Um, the recreational master plan is, is more high level. Uh, however, it will be proposing different steps to take in terms of recreational um, activities, facilities. So you'll have to weigh it out uh, in terms of what you'd like to do, and it could help us in terms of engagement. However, holding off the repairs and construction until the master plan shows up will be too late. So, um, another way to think of this, if, if you're looking at your options again, option three was status quo. In other words, don't start any repairs until you find the basketball court location. The first option is we get going on the construction and then we look for the options to be explored for the basketball court. So, 
um, with the master plan coming in in uh, a matter of months to you, um, we'll be able to start to explore where the other locations can be. But in the meantime, repairs and construction begin on the reservoir. Very well, thank you. So then that means that we're short a basketball court that we've already heard is well utilized and certainly my own my own observation of that is, is would support that that every time i draft past there there are people using it um but we believe then that there are other places for them to do that currently without building a replacement is that correct? Well, there's other places to play basketball. There's lots of basketball courts, but there isn't a fenced-in area where you can crawl your kids or play ball hockey and have balls go. So it really is, like, I know we're referring to it as a basketball court, but it really does get used for so much more. Um, and I'm disappointed that we have to, to de decommission it before to do these repairs because we had intended to move it and then do the repairs. But uh, we do need to get on with the repairs to make the water safe, and I'm not willing to let go of the fact that we need this facility in this city. So we're going to have to have this greater conversation when the master plan comes, um, when in consultation with Baja. But um, but like I say, I think I think we're, our backs are against the wall, and we got to do something yes. here. And as much as I would hate, I hate to do this um, without having a replacement facility. I think there's location in town for this facility that will be accepted by the community, and we just have to find it. So um, then we have little choice here to meet all those considerations that really only option one does that. Pretty much. Okay, thank you. Councillor Barnhart. Thank you, Your Worship. And just further to that, I don't think option one says clearly enough what option three says, that we continue to look for a suitable location to construct that basketball court. And my concern would be <clears throat> if we leave the um, decision making to after the rec facility master plan is completed and approved, we may, oh, that's not my phone, that's <laughs> It's not me. Um, that we may, in fact, not be, um, we might have to have that conversation again about whether we want a basketball court or not. And I would like today to say that that decision predated the facility master plan and we should be proceeding with it. I'm, I'm just very fearful that we're going to be I, again, having to list the priorities and decide oh. whether this is a priority and find that because the, the conversation went this way in terms of looking at the 2020 budget, I don't think we want to go there. To your point, we've made this decision and I, I don't want to rehash whether we need a basketball court or a, so, a court to have those sports on. And I don't know what else to call it other than a basketball court. What? But you're absolutely right. We need one of those. So you're, are you proposing that we go with, to make a motion that council approve the decommissioning of the basketball court and commence the reservoir service upgrades without constructing a replacement court at this time and that further options and be explored? For continue to look for a suitable location to construct that. Yes, to continue to... to Those yeah. one and three combined. Yeah, combined. You know where I'm getting at, actually? <laughs> That's exactly what I... Are you, are you prepared to make that motion at this point? I am the definitely prepared to make that motion. Fair enough. And, I, and just further to it, I do know... I did ask some of the youth that, that uh, play basketball whether or not they felt there were enough facilities in the city for that. They're not the same. Yes, you can shoot hoops, but you don't have a facility like that one anywhere. So that would be... Uh, All right, so now we have a motion on the floor. Councilor Van Newkirk. Thank you. We've had a lot of conversation uh, today, but there's one question that, uh, that hasn't been uh, answered, and if it has, my apologies. but. So we decommissioned the basketball, the, the multi-sports field that includes basketball hoops <laughs> right now. What is the approved use after the repairs are done? What's the approved use on that little, that, that chunk of land? Like, is it going to go back into grass and it can be used to run around and put some pylons and ride bikes on? Or is it going to be a cement wasteland that has razor wire around it? Or what, what is it, what is it going to be? Um, because there might be a win-win here if we, you know, if we continue to just reimagine what a multi-use area may look like or, um, you know, change yeah. it into some other little form of a park or something. And the second part of this question um, is, is if we're having the conversation about this reservoir, uh, we have a couple more uh, on 50th Ave east of 44th Street to have grass on the top of those. And, uh, you know, our, you know, 
does what we do on this reservoir uh, set precedent for what we can do on top of those other reservoirs in the future? Who's taking that one? Fire that to me if you like. See you. Without seeing the actual uh, end drawings here, and I haven't had this discussion with infrastructure, so for your first question, I will have to get back to you. However, my experience tells me the regulations around water reservoirs have changed significantly in the last 10 to 15 years. And the facilities that I'm familiar with are exactly what you said, fenced and razor wired, not razor wired, but the point <laughs> is there's security, security control. Yeah. So there's nobody walking on them. There's nobody having access to any of the, the, the uh, um, clean outs or anything like that. So I've seen them where the, the can't, there's a 24 hour surveillance because it is drinking water and it's pretty important, but we'll have to get back to you on what the, final fixed uses for this reservoir. Yeah. And how does that, and does this ses, does this decision and what we do here set precedence for the other reservoirs in the community? Because the other reservoirs are marked. There are little signs uh, on the ones on 50th out east of 44th on the hillside there. There are little signs there, but will we see a budget item to increase the security around those um, after we look into this? Because there may be budget implications for that that we haven't considered. There may very well be, but if there's regulations that we're not following, and, and we must follow them. Yeah. So that'll probably be part of the discussion moving forward then. Yeah, I agree. Councilor Uh Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm surprised we're, we're still on this. Um, to me, it's pretty straightforward. We need to provide safe drinking water for our community. Let's let them do that. And then we'll worry about where the basketball court goes. We're going to talk about it in three weeks. Um, this, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves trying to figure out and plan up here. This is the last thing that we tried to avoid doing. We put into a rec master plan for, for, for a reason. If the rec master plan comes back and says that, you know, this type of facility is ranked number 15 on the list, then that's where it is, right? Like, just because we made a decision previously, I know that I agree. It'd be great to have this multi-serve, but let's wait till the master plan. It's not wasting any more time on this. I think it's just a pretty straightforward yes on one with the, the motion that's on the floor. Right, we're going to consider this, but let's give them. Uh, I would hate to for anything to happen to the water supply because we were trying to find a basketball court location, a multi-use court. So let's just make a decision on this one and, and let's hammer it out during the um, during the the recreation master plan discussion. So I, I will be voting for the motion on the floor. Thank you. Thank you. I see no further. I see no further request to speak, so close, dis close discussion on the motion and call the question. All in favor? That carries unanimously. Thank you very much. That brings us to item 8C. One second. Thank you very much, Mr. Sue. Thank you. Item C, <laughs> request for decision notice of motion, Beaumont's multi-use trail system. So we will get administration to introduce it, and Councillor Barnhart can speak to it, and then we'll open up debate. Ms. Minter. Thank you, Worship. Through you to members of council and the public. At the July 9th, 2019 council meeting, Council Barnhart made the following notice of motion that council direct administration to provide a cost and time estimate to conduct a study on Beaumont's multi-trail system that includes the following. Current existence of trails in comparison to original plans, identification of all emissions and discrepancies within the trail system, and recommendations to enable complete trail connectivity. In accordance with the meeting procedurals bylaw, once a motion is made, it will be placed at the next regular council meeting in which the elected official who made the notice of motion is present and will vote whether this matter will proceed. At this time, administration is looking for council on how they wish to proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Barnhart. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. And uh, this is a team effort. I've been uh, encouraged to make this motion by Councilor Stout. And he certainly uh, has, has told me he'd like to speak to it as well uh, when that opportunity arises. But I, I would just like to say that the motion is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, trails have always been a priority in our community and the connectivity is extremely important. Um, I have heard from people that I know that have come to Beaumont to use our trail system. Um, Again, there's some, sometimes there's frustration from outside, although mostly I hear accolades. I think it's within the, the city that we, we want to explore more and we find that we're 
um, perhaps having to cross over too many streets and go on sidewalks, et cetera. So the, um, the motion's pretty straightforward. It's asking for an update on where we are, what are the gaps, what can we do, and if there are other recommendations we have to make to uh, improve that connectivity. It's certainly a goal of mine to see that, uh, that happen as soon as possible within budget. So uh, the, the, the reasons behind that, and if uh, Councillor Stout, I... Can I, to you? Get you, can I just get you to make <laughs> the motion before? Oh, do you want me to make? Yeah, might as well. I, I thought then we I got have, something okay. to discuss. So I uh, um, will make the motion that council direct administration to provide a cost and time estimate to conduct a study on Beaumont's multi-use trail system that includes the following: current existence of trails in comparison to the original plans, identification of all omissions and discrepancies within the trail system, and recommendations to enable complete trail connectivity. Thank you very much. And as this is a team effort, I will. Councillor Stout, if you want to. Thank you, Worship. Yes, I'd love to. Um, yes, as Councillor Barnard's already alluded to, this was really my no submission, or at least a team effort. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it at the last meeting, so um, it's before us today. Um, we used to have, uh, at one time, our desks used to have a multi use trail master plan diagram in them. I, I don't see it now today, but it was here until quite recently. Um, there is such a document still exists on the website, or again, at least it did last time I checked. Um, that describes a complete multi-use trail around the, in those days, the town, now the city of Beaumont, um, which I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, but I'm going to anyway, um, enables walkers, dog walkers, runners, joggers, cyclists, skateboarders, rollerbladers and anybody else who can who is not using a vehicle um, to um, circulate around the town to gain access to amenities to parks and recreation facilities and retail centers without um, impeding motor traffic and without being endangered by it um, but it only really works if it connects all these things together and, is, and that's what the original plan actually um, proposed. Um, so what's, but what's actually happened in practice in the, and I'll defer to Councillor Hendricks on this, but I think it's at least 25 years, 20, 25, um, since this was originally proposed. And what's actually been implemented um, on the west, to the west of 50 Street is largely complete. It's, it's implemented mostly as planned. Um, with the result that all those good things are possible on that side of town and, and that uh, both residents and visitors generally give it pretty good reviews um, from what I've seen and heard. Um, east of 50th Street, a very different story. A very much a patchwork of implementation mm -hmm. and non-implementation. Some, some um, areas have pretty much fully implemented, but not many. Uh, most have a partial or virtually no implementation at all. And what that leaves us with is a patchwork of trails that don't, on that side of town that don't really connect to anything. Useful if there one, happens to be one right outside your property, but in an effort to go from one place to another, to, to, and we're, we're in, we want to support walkability and, and access by means other than motor transport, um, not useful at all. Also provides us with a um, with a bit of a stranded asset in that the city is responsible for snow clearing and maintaining these uh, these partial trail, these incomplete trails. Um, with but so we have an operating cost, but we're not realising the full benefit of that. Of, uh, so um, I think this is a problem. I think it's a problem that needs to be addressed. The first step in addressing that problem is to find out how big a problem it is and to look at some options for, to fix it, and maybe even to try and put a price tag on it so that we, when it comes to budget time, we can say yes or no to doing this. Um, so I'm firmly in support of this motion, and I commend it to you. Councillor McGrath-Swain. Thank you, Worship. Thanks for putting the motion forward. I know you've been uh, um, talking about this for a while, so I appreciate you doing that. The, the one question I had, uh, for administration, I assume that this would have been part of the recreational master plan. Uh, is that not part of that discussion? Ms. Mahalik. Thank you, Your Worship, and through to Councillor Monkoff-Swain. Um, it is. 
what we could do is uh, I'd come up with a list. This is what I'm not sure about the, the master plan as it stands today of whether it goes to the level of detail of listing off um, the actual implementation steps of what trail first and how much and when. I'm not sure if that's addressed in the master plan. That said, we still have a little bit of time before it's coming in front of you. So I think that's something that could be added and perhaps addresses what's being asked for here as well. Yeah, so the reason why I asked the question, like I, I fully support where we're going here. What I, what I don't want to do is, is have administration doing this double the work. Um, but what I also don't want to have is just a, a generic recommendation coming back as part of the master plan and say, let's improve trails and us not have the detail that we need to be able to make the decision. So if you could marry that gap, um, then uh, then I'm, I'd be comfortable. I just, uh, direction I support where we're going here, um, I just want to make sure that um, we have enough information and that's going to be the, the ask on everything that comes in that recreation master plan. We're going to need 10 hours to have this conversation because uh, we're going to get into the detail on that, right? So um, how can you help us here? See you. I will share that uh, there is ongoing work to complete a map I and mean, it's very close to being completed. Uh, we've got a very ambitious uh, municipal intern who's been working very hard on it. So we'll be able to show council within the next week or two what, which trails are connected and which are not. So it'll give us an idea of, uh, of uh, prioritization and, and possibly costs. Tell them what been, he's been doing. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. He's been riding his bicycle all over town and mapping out where the trails end. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, we all, I, I shouldn't say we all, uh, I certainly support this. Uh, I just want to make sure that when it comes to budget time, um, we don't have this, it's a big picture thing that we need to clarify, right? And if it's a case of, okay, this is going to be something that we're going to dedicate funding over the next three years, where we're going to improve these quadrants, we just need to be able to know that. So uh, I support this. If, if it means addressing that within the master plan, then great. I don't want to delay the master plan any longer.